Whether you're an adrenaline junkie or just trying to impress your Instagram followers with how full throttle your life is, there are plenty of insane things you can do while on vacation. From war zone tourism to volcano boarding, here are the world's most extreme tourist destinations. Number 10, wingsuiting, the world's deadliest sport. Don't be fooled by the amazing YouTube videos. One of 20 wingsuiters die. Wingsuiting is when people jump off of cliffs, buildings, or airplanes wearing flying squirrel-like suits. It's not flying, it's falling with style. And a parachute is the only safety net between you and certain death. Lauter Brunnen, Switzerland has become the wingsuit mecca, mainly after Yuli Emanuel flew through a tiny cave hole which attracted thrill seekers to attempt even more dangerous stunts. Lauterbrunnen is a beautiful valley in the Swiss Alps. They call it the land of 72 waterfalls. High cliffs overlook the village below, like something out of a fairy tale. Around 20,000 wingsuiters come per year to fly through it and try not to splat on the rock cliffs. Paper beats rock, but rock beats wingsuiter. Wingsuited base jumpers reach speeds of up to 225 miles an hour. It's as extreme as it gets, with 72% of them having witnessed death or serious injury from their fellow wingsuiters, while 43% sustained severe injuries of their own. But flying above Lauterbrunnen Valley is still too irresistible for the fledgling rookies arriving each year. Aussie jumper Dugues McDougall said, It's the most primal moment of instinct you could ever, ever have. I can only imagine it'd be like a caveman running from a dinosaur. Number 9. Active War Zone Tourism In these times of instant gratification, some of us need that extra mile for a memorable vacation. How about getting battle wounded in an active war zone? Sadly, there's always a few wars being waged across the globe. And it's easier than you think to arrange tour guides crazy enough to be your little battle Sherpa. The Golan Heights on the Israeli-Syrian border has become a popular destination for death wishers far and wide. It's been described as a 4th of July party that wants to kill you. A favorite activity of the war zone tourist is tracking missiles and bombs so you can get close to the blast zone. The smoke, the shock, and the awe of a missile explosion is said to be exhilarating. And remember I said you can get shot at? Traveling behind enemy lines with a trusty tour guide is the best way to ensure bullets come whizzing at your face. Getting to the front line is possible, and don't worry because you'll usually have a fine selection of concrete walls or sandbags to cower behind in the fetal position. Make sure you use the lo-fi filter on Instagram. It helps to remove the look of terror from your face. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notified of new videos, and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number eight. A number of Japanese cities have started a new global fad for letting off steam. After a long day of work, now there's an alternative to drowning your sorrows in whiskey. If you're feeling pent up with rage, maybe your next vacay should include Osaka, Japan. It's better to let your rage take form in a safe space than get locked up on felony assault charges for attacking a waiter that messed up your drink order. They're called rage rooms and renting one out can cost thousands of dollars. It's a place where you just unleash all your frustration by destroying inanimate objects. Sounds healthy enough. Cheaper rates start at $15 if you bring your own breakables. Like me, most people aren't sure about it until they try. According to testimonials, it's wonderful. Smashing lamps with a hammer is surprisingly cathartic. Flip over some tables, swing a sledgehammer through a wall, and all of a sudden, it doesn't matter so much that your boss yelled at you in front of the entire company. Number seven. The Catatumbo lighting in Lake Maracaibo is also known as the never-ending storm. 
around 260 times per year. These natural light shows blaze with thunder and lightning for up to 10 hours a night. People who brave hurricane force winds and risk getting cooked by lightning strikes can come away with some pretty sweet pics for their Snapchat story. It's a great place for the environment too. Fun fact, lightning replenishes our ozone layer and Catatumbo holds the Guinness Book of World Record title for the place on earth with the highest concentration of lightning. Smart visitors ride lightning proof houseboats on the lake. In this tropical rainforest, you're also sure to see a range of unique plants and animals. Another fun fact, the Catatumbo lightning helped Venezuela fight for independence. Two foreign invasions were thwarted by the raging storms, and one of them was led by English legend Sir Francis Drake. Number 6. A majority of South American countries practice ayahuasca ceremonies. These psychedelic rituals are as old as the tribes living in the rainforest. Tourists from all over the world make the trip to go trip in the rainforest. A substance called DMT is concocted in a foul tasting jungle brew that makes you see visions from the spirit world. And for this journey, you'll need yourself a shaman. But not all of the shamans are on the up and up. The goal is to have a transformative experience, but end up with the wrong shaman and you might get dosed with Colombian Bogota better known as scopolamine. This is the truth serum used by CIA interrogators to drug victims that are then compelled to follow any order. Regardless of where it's done, ayahuasca is not to be taken lightly. It's about as intense of an experience as a human being can have. Scientific studies suggest the same active substance in ayahuasca is the same chemical your brain is flooded with during your birth and your death. Number five. Every month, 10 to 30,000 partygoers gather at Copenhagen. It's an idyllic tropical island. The horde of mostly white foreigners come to celebrate the full moon, the black moon, or just about any type of moon with big island-wide festivals. Located in the Gulf of Thailand, it's a bit remote, but they do throw one hell of a party. It lasts anywhere from 24 hours to an entire month. They originally started as tribal festivals in celebration of the moon for religious purposes. Expect a lot of neon, a lot of fire, a lot of explosions, booze, mushrooms, and ecstasy, and of course, music. Drugs aren't exactly legal here, but I don't think many people have heard the news. And buyer beware, Thai prisons are notoriously bad lodgings. Elephant rides, tiger cuddling, and speedboat races are some of the extreme activities on the island. The beauty and the excitement can mask the dangers to party-seeking visitors on Full Moon Island. People have died from stray bullets, not so stray bullets, stabbings, overdoses, human stampedes, and one unlucky 36-year-old British man was trampled to death during one of those elephant rides. That's an elephant you never forget. Number four, African kayaking safaris are the type of African sightseeing that take chutzpah. South Africa's St. Lucia estuary is a melting pot of interesting animals, including dangerous ones like hippos, crocodiles, bull sharks, and poisonous snakes. Kayaking here is no laid back river float. To be honest, I don't know why people still do it. Plenty have been drowned or eaten by creatures that lurk in these waters. At any rate, St. Lucia remains a popular destination for vacations and kayaking. Number three, Mount Everest and K2 are popular climbing spots in the Himalayan tourism industry of Nepal. But Annapurna is the most extreme and deadly on earth. 157 mountaineers have successfully climbed it, but 60 have died trying. It's 26,545 feet tall, and you'll need to set aside around 46 days for the trek. Only 38% of attempts reach the top successfully. Why? 
Compared to Everest, the terrain is more difficult, the weather is more unstable, and the avalanches are more frequent. It's not often talked about, but the real heroes of mountaineering are the Sherpas. They get paid pennies on the dollar to risk their lives, and they do most of the work. Without the Sherpas, almost every expedition would have been impossible. The first European to ever scale Mount Everest was named Sir Edmund Hillary. And when Edmund was asked why he climbed the mountain, he responded, because it's there. Number two. In South Africa, people actually pay to be ferried across the coast, locked in a cage with rotting fish, and dropped in shark-infested waters. The South African Cape is home to the world's most shark-infested waters with the largest and most aggressive species, the Great White Shark. They call it Shark Alley. So if you want to see great whites fling themselves in the air after seals or launch after you under protection of steel cage, what you gotta do is fly to Cape Town. Number one. Do you want to bomb down steep hills on an active volcano? Does black sand and lava cooked meals sound better than cold fluffy snow? Then check out volcano boarding. For $30 plus cost of travel, you can go to Leon, Nicaragua for a blaze of glory. A local team will guide you to a number of live volcanoes in their beautiful country. Self-proclaimed expert vagabond Matthew Karsten said, racing down an active volcano at 30 miles an hour on a little piece of wood is really fun. Also fun is knowing the mountain could blow up at any second, blasting out giant boulders and rivers of molten lava. Let's go over a few tips for volcano boarding. Lean back for more speed. Slowing down is helped by dragging your hand through the sand and crashing is okay, but not recommended.